Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy, coming again on this vlog this evening to talk to you about tow ratings and, more importantly, your responsibilities as the vehicle owner. Um, you know, there have been some things that have come up over the last couple weeks that I felt that we needed to readdress this and maybe readdress it in a different way, maybe break it down to maybe something a little bit more in layman's terms so that you understand. So as you can see, I have some props here with me this evening to try to break it down. So let's talk about four different things you need to consider before we even talk about tow rings. Let's talk about the safety for you and your family. Number two, talking about safety for others on the road. Because obviously, if you're gonna overload your vehicle, regardless of whether you know, it's a car, a truck, motorhome, you not only are putting you and your family, uh, your safety at risk, but you're putting others on the road at risk. You know, the old saying is, yeah, you may be able to tow that thing, however, stopping is a whole nother story. So keep that in mind. The other thing is your liability. If in fact that you get in, in an accident and it is your fault, what would your liability be if in fact you know the individual that you hit or whatever they get a good good attorney and they take a look and see that you are towing something that was exceeding your tow capacity so that'd be your liability and then the last thing is of course insurance let's say it's not your fault let's say you just swerved to for an accident for whatever deer oncoming car or whatever and you wreck the insurance company could come back at you and say, you know, you were towing something that was too heavy for your vehicle, we are not gonna cover that. So those are some things to consider. Now let's break it down here. I'm just gonna move this one out. We're gonna talk about trailers and vehicles. All vehicles have a tow rating. So it's the amount of weight that they can safely tow. Now let's break it down and talk about what that means. Let's say that you have a 5,000 pound tow capacity on your vehicle. Now, what most people fail to realize is that there are a few factors that you gotta take into consideration. One, does your owner's manual say that that is 5,000 pounds with the driver, or do you need to add for the driver's weight? Now, the other thing they tell you to do is any other person or any other cargo that you're putting in your vehicle goes against your tow rating. So try to calculate that because that's, a, that's important. You have a 5,000 pound tow, tow capacity, you're putting 500 pounds of cargo and people in your vehicle, now you have 4,500. So that is why you wanna look at what you can, you know, okay, what unloaded weight of the vehicle do you wanna go with? Now the next thing you've gotta look at when you're looking at the trailer or pop-up or whatever, you need to look at, okay, what is the dry weight? what is the gross weight and then also what is the ton weight that means the weight that's going to be pushing down on your vehicle so when i set this on my vehicle how much downforce am i putting too much downforce where i'm pulling the front tires off the ground hence the reason for weight distribution now as far as your ratings for your class three or any type of hitch receiver that you have on your vehicle there could be two different classifications or ratings one being just dead weight so it's just you're just gonna drop it on the ball and go um, the other is considered with weight distribution it is possible that you could have a tow rating of 5,000 pounds the hitch would say that but then typically when you have that the tongue weight is 10% of of the rating so if you have a rating of 5,000 pounds that means the tongue rating would be uh, 500 pounds now in the event that it had a rating for let's say weight distribution that may increase the tow tow rating of let's say up to 6,000 or 7,000 pounds and giving you a uh, and it may not raise it at all but it might and then give you a tongue weight of let's say 750 pounds with weight distribution so those are things you need to consider now, if you don't have the proper hitch receiver on your vehicle, it is possible that there is an uh, aftermarket one through Reese 
uh, each rail or a number of different ones, Kurt, you know, so forth, that can provide you with a heavier hitch for your vehicle. Now, some of you might be asking, well, Paul, you know, for my rating on my vehicle, it says something in there that if I have the tow package. What's the tow package? Because, for instance, a Jeep, a regular Jeep Wrangler four-door would have a tow rating of 2,000 pounds. However, if in fact you had the um, if you had the tow package on it, you would be able to tow 3,500 pounds. So let's talk about what the tow package is. And this pretty much is uh, generic throughout uh, the industry. Tow package is going to be you're going to have a um, transmission cooler. You're going to have it wired, pre-wired for a brake controller. Although the brake controller won't be there. And then you'll have a class two receiver on the back with a seven-way plug. So that is a tow package. In a lot of your uh, upscale vehicles nowadays, you're finding to have the integrated brake controllers. Um, down the road, I'm gonna be getting into the new uh, trucks that are out there that have certain things that you need to adjust when you hook your vehicles up. So that'll be coming down the road. I wanna make sure I get to a dealership to be able to show you what you're gonna be doing with that because it's onboard and you need to, there's a few things you need to do. So, that would be a tow package. Um, so you have your tow package and highly recommend you have yourself a transmission cooler when you're towing. Um, if you don't have one, recommendation is to go to a dealer to have them put that on. And I'm not talking about an RV dealer, I'm talking about the actual dealer of the vehicle, the, the manufacturer that built your car. So it's Chevy, if it's GM, if it's a Dodge, Ford, Toyota, whatever it is, Honda, go to that dealership and have them install a um, transmission cooler. Now, the, the issue also you have to look at with tow ratings is, okay, what's the wheelbase of your vehicle? You know, compared to how long of a trailer you have. You know, general rule of thumb, well not rule of thumb, but in my estimation, is that you know, if you have just a regular half ton pickup and you wanna tow a trailer, you know, you start getting over 32 feet, you're getting to be, be a little bit too long for your vehicle. Um, so you've gotta look at those things as well because it would be more like the, the tail wagging the dog. Now you gotta also make sure that you put a good weight distribution dual cam sway control on your, um, for your hitch work when you do that. Now let's talk about let's talk about fifth wheels because fifth wheels are another animal. So on your truck what you're going to have and by the way Ford I think is one of the best out there that they have uh, FordFleet.com or Fleet Ford, yeah, FordFleet.com that gives you the ratings and you can just go on there and look down the bottom for tow, tow ca uh, capacities for vehicles and they have it by year. Love the way they have it set up um, and what you're able to do is go and look at your specific vehicle and look at the ratings. And one thing that a lot of people look at when you're going to a fifth wheel is they're negating what the, the pin weight of that particular fifth wheel is. Um, for instance, uh, 2017 Ford F-250 Super Cab Diesel short bed, meaning the six and three quarter, uh, six and three quarter foot bed, that has a tow capacity of somewhere between 14.7 to 15.4 with the 355 rear end. And then it comes, it, they break it down according to your gross combined weight rating for the truck. Next thing they have, you've got to look it up. And you look it up as where as, uh, they have the slide in camper. That will tell you how much pin weight you can put on there. And for that particular truck, you're looking at, with a four x four, you're looking at just under 2,000 pounds of pin weight. So you've gotta be very careful. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have a diesel, I can tow whatever I want. Um, and men, we just gotta go ahead and set our egos aside and understand that sometimes we just don't have a big enough truck to tow the fifth wheel that we want. Uh, four, I mean, Chevy, has come out back in 2016, they dropped their tow ratings. Now, even with a diesel, you're down in the low 14,000 pound range and the tongue weight's low as well, or the pin weight. So you've got to be careful. One other thing that they talk about when you're looking at your owner's manual, if you open it up, they talk about wind uh, or frontal area 
of your trailer. And there's a maximum for that. So that is another thing that you need to consider. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody come in and they might be have a minivan, they could tow 3,500 pounds and they want to tow this trailer that is, let's say 27, 2,800 pounds. Well, they don't have enough vehicle for that. And you know, I will tell somebody that they don't have the vehicle because in my, in my situation is this, you may be angry at me, but I can guarantee you one thing, I'm not going to be the cause of putting a safety issue uh, for you and your family, but more importantly, I'm not going to be the one that causes your vehicle to go ahead and have an issue down the road. So those are things you need to consider and make sure that you look at that. Um, unfortunately, there's some dealers out there, RV dealers, that do not weigh the tongues. Uh, they just go by what the brochure says. Brochures from these manufacturers aren't necessarily factual. Uh, some are better than others. From a general rule of thumb, you can look at that particular tongue weight and you add the weight for the propane as well as the batteries and that would give you kind of an idea of where it would be. Now, unfortunately, some of the manufacturers, the tongue weight and the dry weights of their campers are without the options. So what happens is the dry weight ramps up and it could ramp up, you know, could be, you know, a couple hundred pounds, it could be eight, nine hundred pounds. And same thing with the tongue weight. That could go up, you know, another hundred pounds just because of the options, depending on the size of the trailer and where the options were added. Battery, you can figure adding for your standard uh, deep cycle battery, 45 pounds. And then of course you have 20 pound tanks. You have two of them, there's 40. So there's 85 pounds that you need to add to the tongue weight. So one other thing on your trucks, when you are, uh, cause I ha hear people tell me this all the time. You know, they'll come in to pick it up and the, the front, you'll notice the back will squat a little bit. The wheels are up a little bit. So now your low beams are actually high beams for oncoming traffic. And people will say, well, yeah, I'm just gonna go put airbags or put another leaf spring on there, which is all well and good. And you probably need that even if the trailer is well within your weight uh, capacities. But don't be fooled by some people that tell you by adding a leaf spring or adding airbags that you have changed your tow rating because you have not. You can't take a three quarter ton truck, I'm uh, you know, sorry, half to, uh, yeah, three quarter ton truck, put extra leaf spins, uh, springs on there, airbags and everything, and expect it to have the tow rating of a one ton single rear wheel. It does not work that way. But folks, I appreciate you watching. Check out my, um, my other uh, videos on my channel. I have how to videos, product recommendations, as well as I have, of course, product reviews, meaning, you know, different RVs and so forth. Is there something, if there's something in particular that you would like me to cover for you, by all means, just reach out to me. All my information is below. If uh, for some reason, you know, you have a group that maybe you'd like me to come and speak at, again, reach out to me and we'll see what can work out. Thanks for watching. I will be coming back at you again next week. Take care.